time today. Um, we just want to go over a little bit about more about what our program is and the type of program model that we're trying to get out there and um, and then to go over a little bit of what our summer program was. So if I am tech savvy enough, I'll be able to um, share our little slideshow that we put together today so we can kind of go over what um, we're going to try to talk about. So we're going to talk, talk a little bit about what our student is, um, why did we create Rooted Life Adventures and who we are, um, our outcomes that we're hoping to accomplish in our program, and just a little bit about what it looks like to be on there. And then please, 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 if anybody has any questions at any time, please just like jump on. Um, you don't have to like raise your hand or put it in a chat. Like just please unmute yourself and um, and we can go over everything together. And hopefully this is all the content that you guys are after, but please let me know if there's more that you'd like to know. Okay, so this past summer we did an adolescent uh, girls program. We did ages 14 through 17 years old. Uh, we had students come from all different kinds of backgrounds and the purpose of this program is we created it to kind of fit this in-between student. Um, this whole program was uh, created to try to figure out that space that's in between gap year and camp and an adventure program and immersive a program abroad uh, that has all of those incredible features of experiential learning and volunteer service learning and an internship and language immersion, but try to make it approachable for students who have a variety of mental health challenges um, and also be able to give them the support that they would need to be able to complete that type of program um, uh, successfully and be able to give them an amazing space abroad where they can be out of their home and their rhythm and routine and be able to work on their mental health in a totally different environment um, and in a variety of different challenges. And we're trying to create that space in between what is a gap year program and what's in between adventure therapy or, or a wilderness therapy program. And so we are uh, kind of like just this weird gap year plus um, adventure therapy light kind of space that we're trying to make approachable. And so we're trying to invent a different model that has a whole bunch of different features um, and, uh, and fit that student that isn't quite a fit for full on adventure therapy, really does want a program abroad, but needs that extra level of mental health support in order to be able to do it. Um, so our in-between kiddos, um, they're difficult to describe. Um, and so, you know, if you're an ed consultant, and you're trying to figure out, man, you know, what kind of student is the right fit for, um, uh, for Rooted Life Adventures, we're usually seeing um, our students are often on a bell curve. Um, either this is a student where this is the very first program that they've ever done with any mental health support ever. You know, they've definitely had some struggle in school. Maybe they're seeing a therapist back home. Um, and this is maybe their first venture into a program that has some type of mental health support or a therapeutic component. Or we're seeing a student who has done kind of like a full, a full journey, right? Like they have been, uh, they've been to wilderness or they've been to a PHP or IOP or some type of treatment. And now they're looking to, they've done really hard work on their mental health and they are trying to figure out how to um, how to, to take the skills and tools that they have learned and apply them in a less structured environment, apply them in a setting that feels more like real life. So apply them in a house, in a real kitchen with real with roommates, um, with uh, unstructured time. And then how do they take those skills and then apply them, but then there's still that support um, available to them if they need it. Um, so we're definitely seeing students with varieties of mental health um, uh, challenges, but I say a lot of on, on our team, we're not looking at specific diagnoses. We're not, we're not a program that has like a niche, right, where we're just working with students with ADHD or on the spectrum or just anxiety. We have students um, that kind of come from all over, but we're looking at skills. Um, so does this student have buy-in? Do they want to do a, a challenging program abroad? Um, are, and, you know, we have a couple disqualifiers, like they can't be a danger to themselves or others um, and and they really need to like want to be here and be coachable um, but anybody can come from any type of background as long as they're like ready to take on the challenge of the program they can so um, it's no any like one kind of student we had students from summer that had um, that had um, uh, that were bipolar or borderline or ha struggling with an ED. Uh, we had students with you know, high anxiety or depression, uh, but come from a variety of backgrounds, um, but have done really hard work and are looking to figure out how to apply their tools in a supportive and wellness environment. Does that make sense? Everybody feel good about that? Fantastic. Okay. Um, our 
rooted life. Again, we are still spitting out all the different ways to describe ourselves, but we're an international program that has mental health support on program. So we have a whole bunch of different components to our program, uh, which is like an internship and voluntary service learning. Um, but as we're here, we are trying to um, we're trying to come up with a couple different ways that we can provide that mental health support. So a couple things that we do differently um, is that we do have a live-in therapist who lives with the students serving as a therapeutic coach. That's Ama who's here. Um, and she spends all day long with them. She is a roommate. We're staying at the same house and is with them all day long. And what's fun about that is that you're with them in fun and you're with them in challenge. You're going rafting with them. You're eating breakfast with them and you're shooting them with paint guns and um, or getting in water balloon fights together it's, um, or singing karaoke. Although Ama usually passes on the karaoke. Um, and, uh, <laughs> and so something else that we're trying to do that's new and different, um, is that we often are finding that most of our students are coming, working with a therapist already, working with a therapist at home, that their parents have spent a considerable amount of time trying to find the right fit, uh, of, of clinician to work with them. And so, you know, and they've known them for ages. And so something we're trying to bring in is partnering with that at home clinician. And so we will, um, bring in their therapist during the admissions process. And then we will help even get another look from them. Are they ready to take on this kind of challenge? Um, and then we will set up weekly meetings with their therapist at home. So students are able to telehealth with their known clinician throughout the entire program. So they meet weekly and we coordinate that, um, that meeting. And then we're able to give their therapist notes. Their therapist is able to give us coaching notes. Um, and then when the students go home, you know, that continuity of care is something that we're really trying to protect of like, okay, so then they go home and they're still working with that same person, that person who's known them through high school and all of their different struggles. And then also met with them continually on the program, seen them overcome those challenges and then go home and be able to continue working with them past that. Um, so those are the type of different um, therapeutic supports that we're trying to offer there that are a little bit different from your average model. Um, and then while we're on program, we're creating a wellness environment. We're doing wellness skills workshops and some psychoeducation uh, uh, core curriculum while we're on there. So we are doing like group lessons, talking about like conflict resolution, empathy, coping mechanisms and skills, and then trying to do in the moment coaching with them uh, to, for like that direct application. And that could be from anything to overcoming your anxiety um, during a hike or social conflict or um, trying flying trapeze for the first time and you are afraid of heights. <laughs> so all kinds of different things. Um, so, you know, why, why was this program created um, and what are we seeing throughout the industry? You know, we are seeing tons of students that are looking for a traditional gap program that are looking for that, you know, traditional fun adventure with community, a start and stop program where they do the program with the entire, uh, with a cohort for the entire time. Um, seeing tons of students come looking for a gap year program that's experiential and culturally immersive, um, but aren't able to do it without a bit of, um, of mental health support. And so um, with all of our, we, we all know we've been in a mental health crisis for a pretty intense amount of time, but we're seeing so many students and families want more of this like in between program um, that is this adventure program plus support. And so that's something that we're trying to create. Um, what are we trying to do in our program? Man, if I'm trying to sum it up, um, in the most simple terms, um, I'm hoping that our students walk away with a greater sense of self belonging, capability and purpose. Um, these are my layman's terms, um, ability to try to sum up what we're trying to do. And the reason that our program does a variety of activities is that I'm hoping students really develop a sense of self because they have to do so many different activities, whether it's an adventure activity like rafting or their internship or um, their cultural immersion day or wellness day or cook group or life skills, they're figuring out where their strengths lie, where their interests lie. They're figuring out what they're good at, what they're not good at. Um, we're doing a variety of things. It's not just like, okay, we're backpacking for two months. You know, we're doing tons of different things that you're really figuring out what you like, what you don't like, and then how you like function as a team and where you stand out. This program focuses a lot on social skill. Um, it's intentionally in a home. It's intentionally um, start and end dates like GAP. Um, it's intentional that all of the students really have to learn to be roommates and housemates and how to get along every single day and know their group impact um, and all show up on day one total strangers um, and work through the entire program 
um, you know, going through those storming, norming, forming stages and, it, and have to work through their, their differences. And then as they work through all that, they're developing an incredibly strong community on program. Everything is about learning how to develop a community here and develop um, a global community um, in Costa Rica. And, and the purpose of this um, is honestly the students that we're getting in this like post COVID super media impacted world is what we're hearing from a lot of families is just this deep seated loneliness. Um, you know, whatever's going on, the families are telling me that their kids are incredibly lonely, um, that they have not figured that, you know, I have parents that call me and they're like, look, my kid has one friend um, or one friend and they're moving away or has struggled making friends. Um, and so this program really focuses on how to make a good friend, be a good friend um, and, and build community. And honestly, for me, if we can teach students how to build and have community, that's the life skill that will see them through the rest of their life. Um, sense of capability we are tackling. There's a day a week um, uh, that's just about life skills um, and teaching them how to run a home, cleaning laundry, uh, grocery shopping, budgeting, everything like that, um, as well as all of the social capability of like, yeah, how do we, um, you know, get uh, resilient and how do we conf do conflict resolution? Um, and so they're becoming really capable and really self-sufficient on this program. Um, and a big one for me is sense of purpose. Um, so we put a lot of uh, opportunities in front of our students where they are able to do, um, to have meaningful work um, work that they are being able to go from the kind of receiver role where, you know, their, their families and everybody's giving them, you know, okay, hey, what, how can we channel and pour into you? And we're giving them volunteer, um, opportunities and internship opportunities it's like hey you have something to offer um you have uh something that you can give to the world and um and and be able to to go into that that giver role um have that sense of like wow i did this the sense of accomplishment and um and and just the incredible sense of purpose that you get from like wow i did something for someone else today and there's just no replacing that um so that's what we're trying to accomplish um how do we do that uh, well, um, we have, I'll go over a week in the life of a student and a week in the life of parents. Obviously, everybody knows that, you know, parents um, and families have to be uh, in, in involved in, um, and have that parent support. And so what does that look like? And maybe how does that contrast from some other programs? Um, this is probably where we are slightly a bit more gap. Um, and so what we do for parents and parents involvement, um, obviously they're involved in the enrollment, uh, but on one day a week, we do a giant group parent call. So all the parents get on, it's all together and we go over um, fun and silliness and like everything that we've done that week um, in a like, almost like a camp report, you know, like we went rafting and uh, we did this at the internship and this is how the group is doing and where the group is at. Uh, we also go over like core and wellness, um, whatever lessons that we've done that week, and what tools are we learning, what skills are we working on, and then where is the group is at. And then a lot of what we do on this call is facilitating parent to parent support. Um, so it's a little bit, hey, this is what we're doing, and a little bit, hey, this is the core and wellness that we're working on and skills we're working on that you can take at home. And then a little bit, we're trying to foster community on the program. So we're also trying to foster community with the parents. A big part of this program is that we want all these relationships to continue post program. We want all of these students will have each other's numbers, all the parents will have each other's numbers, and we want all of those relationships to continue. We want parents to know each other well. Um, as well. So when the program is over and Katie is best friends with Sarah and wants to go visit Sarah, then mom can be like, yeah, that's okay. I, I know Sarah's parents. Um, and in fact, even after our summer program, there have already been student visits um, that have already been coordinated and they've already done visits in New York and in Colorado and parents have been able to call each other of like, how are you doing with your kid home? And so trying to continue to always foster that sense of community and long lasting relationship. Um, uh, our students do get their phones once a week on program. Uh, we're pretty limited technology, but this isn't a no technology program. Um, so they don't bring like laptops or anything, but students do bring their phones. We pick them up uh, um, uh, when they get there and then they have their phones on their wellness day for one hour to do telehealth with their therapist. And then they get them from like five to seven in the evening and they take their phones and they <laughs> um, go talk to friends, family, um, and honestly spend a lot of time showing each other pictures of each other's dogs and brothers and houses back home. Um, but parents are able to talk to their kiddos directly on program once a week. Um, so we want that relationship to continue. We want them to be able to be talking to each other. Um, and so they get direct contact then. 
Um, and then on Tuesday, we send them like a, we send parents a big group weekly update. Uh, and then at any point in time, parents can check in with us. So that's kind of like the parent experience. Um, for this upcoming fall semester with young adults, we've also added parent coaching. Um, so parents, every single family on the program will get um, three parent coaching sessions as students transition into program. And then at the end of program, they will get three parent coaching sessions as they transition out of program. Um, does anybody have any questions about the parent experience? Can I just add, we also reach out individually if there's a student that's struggling. And sometimes we'll do a phone call with that parent just to kind of work them through that struggle for that day or that week. Uh, any questions about parents in their life? Okay, good. So thorough. Okay, so our students, um, our students come on program and the program itself has a weekly, um, a weekly schedule that repeats. So um, for our summer program, this was Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, the days are themed and they might change up for fall, um, but generally there is a day one through seven. Um, so we start each week with um, our basically rest and reset, or I call our homestead stewardship day. Our homestead stewardship day is a nicer way of saying chore day, but this is a day that we focus entirely on life skills. So um, students wake up, they do, um, they clean the house top to bottom and on our program, uh, because we are intentionally in a home, we do actually have um, staff come and do cleaning lessons with them. We do a, this is how to clean the bathroom. This is how you clean your house, like your room. This is how you clean the kitchen. And we, we do full on cleaning lessons. We do a laundry lesson um, and we do cooking lessons on the program. Um, and so we do a full day where we clean everything top to bottom. And I do have students scrubbing a toilet for the very first time in their life. Um, and, um, and then we go down and we do, we do have our students do grocery shopping and we do give them some financial financial responsibility. So we bring all the students down and the students um, are broken up into cook teams um, and they rotate each week. And if you're in cook group, then your job is to come up with the meal plan for this upcoming week. What meals do you want to have? And then you have to break that down uh, into um, you have to break that down into uh, like, okay, then what's the grocery shop for that? They're given a budget. They're in charge of keeping that budget. Um, and, uh, and, and then going and grocery shopping in Costa Rica, which can be a hilarious experience, um, whether they're figuring out what different snacks look like um, in Costa Rica or the fact that peanut butter is much more expensive than they ever thought, or still just learning the difference between baking soda and baking powder, which has that an experience. Um, the next day we have a volunteer service learning day. Um, on this past program, um, they did um, uh, they did a, a project where they were building um, a path down to our waterfalls. Our home has uh, um, waterfalls in the backyard. Um, they do a wellness day. Um, well, actually, I just realized that we have other slides that I should be doing this on, um, where they actually have photos to tell you what I'm talking about. So here's our homestead day. Um, so on our homestead day, here's like an example of our, um, of like their, they get out a big pad of paper and they go over, um, what are our, um, menu is going to be, this is them at the grocery store. Usually it is like two, um, two grocery shopping carts going around, they're cleaning and they would, we do a lot of culinary skills on the program. So they are learning to do the stove and knife skills. Um, and, and we are doing like cooking lessons with them and this is how you handle raw chicken. And this is how you do it all, um, safely <laughs> sanitizing. Um, and then we do our core curriculum that day. The next day is our volunteer service learning day. Uh, so this one, we, we were building paths to the waterfalls. So you can see this is our little jungle backyard. Um, and they did like dig out stairs. And then um, some of them walked down these big like cinder blocks and placed them down and reburied them. And they get muddy um, and super sweaty. And then we'd usually just end up like swimming in the waterfall afterwards. And then at the end, they painted up here. You can see they painted their little um, their own little rock that they like left there um, that'll be on the path forever. That's like, hey, this is the path that we made. Um, jumping to next, we do have one wellness day a week uh, where we do go over, uh, we do the seven areas of wellness and we talk about what that looks like in your life, but we're also jumping into um, different areas of like feedback and conflict resolution. And then we always have kind of an experiential activity afterwards. <laughs> um, so whether that is, sometimes we have someone come in 
and we had someone come in and do a yoga session with us. Um, and we have, uh, we, <laughs> oh my gosh, um, we've done, let's see, we did like a conflict resolution and then we filled water guns full of paint and then just like went and shot each other in this like giant, like rainbow, um, paint fight so everything we do is like we kind of come do a group um but it's silly and um and and they have a, a vulnerable conversation and then we like bring it back to fun and experiential um that is the day that all students are able to meet with their own therapists um and they they're able to telehealth and then that's the day that they get uh their phones um Ahmed, do you have anything to say about wellness day no you covered all Got it all. Okay. Also, please jump in. I'm just kind of like going over a lot of some things. If you have stuff to add, please do. Um, our next day is our internship day. Um, it was really important for us to be able to add a kind of professional internship where students are able to see a variety of positions. Um, so we did our internship at an animal sanctuary, which is one where they were able to just see everything that it, uh, the government requires to run an animal sanctuary. Um, and uh, they, it was a really interesting internship where each time that we went, because we go once a week, a different profession presented what uh, what their job was, um, their whole academic history of like, this is what I studied, this is where I interned, this is where I volunteered, and then this is how I got this position um, and this role. And so um, this up here is a, um, in the top left, this is um, the presentation of the vet. And so, you know, I have this group of high school girls, and they're getting to learn from this uh, badass veterinarian who like is telling them about how she like left home at 17 and then like went to the city to go study and um how she had to like learn independently um, how to live independently at such a young age and like um and now she has been doing this for 11 years and she literally told them about how her job is to go out into the jungle and sometimes it would be like a wounded animal and they'd go out to the jungle and like dart like track the animal and then dart it and then she'd go like stick stitch it up in the middle of the and and like right there in the field and then like leave so that it, it could like wake up and then just run away without ever um like really having it that human contact experience or she talked about how she literally jumped on the back of a crocodile roped its mouth and then um, gave it a shot in between its scales and like a shoot you know went into like this is how you have to give a crocodile a shot and it has to go right here um so you get to learn from these incredible um professionals who've all done these different things like the business manager gave a presentation and he was like, look, like I'm good at numbers. I love numbers. I love math. I love accounting. That's just how my brain works. But I also have this passion for animals. And I was able to take my skill set and put it into a job where I impaired it with my passion. And it's, I feel like I've never worked a day in my life. Like when you take your skill set and you pair your passion with it, like you'll never hate Mondays, um, you know? And so they get to hear about, all of these, um, you know, different roles, uh, and, and be like, okay, wow, you know, maybe I did want to be, a, you know, I guess when I was in high school, I only knew that there was like a lawyer or a doctor and these are the only options. Um, and they get to come and hear about all these different varieties of how they can use their skill set to something that maybe they'll love one day. And then each one of them had to do a hands-on activity in regards to that role. So they, um, this is Avery, <laughs> she's inside this enclosure feeding. Um, we had to like separate the animal, but um, she's out there feeding an ocelot. There are a few of them feeding the, um, the crocodile. They made um, a different uh, they're called enrichments um, where they had to use power tools and they had to like make a puzzle um, for the animals when they like have their food, they have to go like get inside of it. Um, and like, it's like a little puzzle to get their food. So they learned about each role and what they did. And then they did hands-on work in regards to that. So that was pretty cool. Um, we do one day a week, it's cultural immersion um, for our past summer program. Uh, we did have about five cooking lessons at home. So we did have a cook come to our house and teach us um, traditional uh, Costa Rican dishes and they were making, so this up here, this is like basically cooking with their Costa Rican grandma up here. We did um, farm visits. We visited a um, third generation dairy farm where uh, 
they had, um, you know, like just passed it down and we learned about like how they approach sustainability, including even recycling methane gas uh, from the cows so that they didn't have to buy propane. We went to a coffee farm where they showed us all of the steps from bean to processing and how they didn't have um, uh, the resources to buy like machines for that. So instead they invented a machine that used a bicycle wheel and a bicycle chain and the motor from a washing machine um in order to process some of the beans and so they like they truly learn every single step of stuff which is really cool um and on the program they do get about on the summer program they got about 30 hours of spanish language immersion on the fall program they'll get about 50 hours and then we do two adventure days a week so after we've done all that we head out and we do a whole bunch of <laughs> a whole bunch of different adventures whether that's exploring different waterfalls surf lessons whitewater rafting kayaking flying trapeze um, seeing manuel antonio two days a week we head out and we go do a whole bunch of different variety of adventures we rarely do the same adventure twice uh, because we're trying to continue to get that variety and try to see different things. And so everybody's being challenged in different ways. Everybody will have something that they excel at um, and everybody will have something to be like, okay, tried it, but that's not for me. Um, I highly recommend flying trapeze, you guys. Not gonna lie, that's a lot of fun. Um, and so then they go out and then of course, by then they're super muddy and absolutely next level disgusting and everybody needs to do laundry and the week starts over with Homestead Stewardship Day. So after two days of adventure, you come home, you clean, you reset, you go over the schedule for the next week. Um, a day in the life um, kind of looks like students wake up, they come down, um, breakfast is provided every morning on this program. Um, and that's just, that's just for me, that was just fun. Um, so they come down, breakfast is made, thank goodness, coffee's ready and waiting for you. Um, they come down, we do, um, we have breakfast, and we do intentions of the day over breakfast. Um, and then uh, the students go journal and leader of the day uh, gives the journal prompt for the day, students go journal, and then they go get their stuff and then there's a go time, they come pick us up and then um, we, we have private transportation for all of our things so they come pick us up and we either go to the internship or rafting or the cultural immersion day, and we go do that activity. And then we're usually home somewhere around three o'clock. Students have, um, and a big thing about our program that's probably different um, from maybe the more adventure therapy is we have a lot of intentional unstructured time. The point of this program is that students are figuring out how to manage their time, how to manage boredom, how to come up with stuff on their own. So it's not structured every moment of the day. So they come home around three o'clock, they have free time. Cook group assembles around five, um, they cook dinner. Um, we do group dinner every single night. Um, and so then we come back, it feels kind of like family dinner, you sit at the table, um, we do gratefuls um, around the dinner table, and then everybody does affirmations, every student goes around and affirms another student for something awesome that they saw in, in, the, in them that day. And then we have free time for the rest of the evening and that our house is pretty incredible. Uh, we are living in a home so that could look like we're going to go play in our waterfalls, we're going to go have a pool party, there's a hot tub, there's a giant chess set. Um, there is a a movie room we don't do movies too much but we do have karaoke <laughs> and so most of the time the movie room is set up as karaoke night and there's a lot of justin bieber and taylor swift that happens and um and it's just like a lot of singing and dancing you know like most of most of dinner is singing and dancing um in fact just with the one rule there's no dancing with knives you do have to put those down before the dancing begins um so that was a special moment uh, but it's silly, you know, like every, and then so in the evening, most of the time when they're, when they're in the car on the way home, they're already planning their evening. Like, okay, guys, so like when we get home, okay, we're going to do this and then play this game and then this game. Um, and we, we try to be pretty hands off. Um, it's intentionally pretty hands off. It is so that student like, man, they're micromanaged, like a lot of programs are like, they are managed and super structured every moment of the day. And at home, a lot of the times they're micromanaged for like every, um, you know, school and then post-school activities and um, all the way through homework. And so we're like, hey, what would you do if you had downtime that you were just in charge of? Could you, could you manage that? So we do a lot of free time um, intentionally. What did we learn from this first program? Um, a few different things. We definitely learned that we had um, our kiddo, I describe him as a little bit more of an indoor cat so thus far. You know, we do have like two adventure days a week, but our students love that they live inside and have beds and have couches. And, you know, um, and so uh, they're not like 
Bear Grylls-y. I can't wait to go backpack for two months. But they're like, I do want adventure, but I don't want to do adventure 24 seven, you know, like I would like to go surfing. Um, but, and I would like to go on a hike, but I, then I want to come back home. And so we definitely kind of do like living in comfort, go out to challenge and come back to comfort. Right. Um, and most of it is because we are trying to get them to how, learn how to run a home. This we're trying to like, kind of mimic what their future, you know, you'll have roommates in college. Like you, you know, we're trying to mimic that. Like you need to learn how to run a house top to bottom. Um, so, and, and how to live and be a roommate. Um, we were actually pretty surprised. Uh, we thought the phone thing, we were like, we're gonna give them phones for like two hours a week. Like, how are we gonna get them back? Um, and our students just handed them right in. It was almost never an issue. They, in fact, they'd come back early and they'd be like, hey, I'm gonna go start, start cook group. They had, uh, they had community there. They had friends there. They had enough to do at home. And turns out, they cared, they didn't have almost any care about having their phones, um, and which was great that they had them for a time so that they could recognize, um, you know, I, I do have this, but I don't want that. There's something else that I want more. So that was just really cool. Um, let's see, we definitely found out that we needed to add parent coaching. Uh, it's, parents were pretty nervous about transition coming home. Um, and it, obviously transition in any time of like, okay, students adjusting to like living abroad and being in Costa Rica, but coming home, there was a little bit of like, they're having too much fun and they don't want to come home. So like how, uh, like by, you know, um, we still have, our students are still in constant communication and they're like, okay, I'm coming back to Costa Rica. Can we just like, all go back? You know, like they have developed really strong community. They have made their best friends here. They are self-sufficient. They run a home top to bottom. They are treated like adults. Um, there was a lot of like, I don't want to go home. I, I, we live here now. Like, what are you talking about? Um, and so being able to help that transition home and then help Help keep a few uh, uh, of those uh, values going at home. Um, but still um, finding the right candidates, still trying to decide who our kiddo, um, how to describe and, and figure out who our kiddo is. Um, so we're definitely, um, we had a few students who, uh, there, there was a student there who did come who was like, um, you know, a little bit higher needs. And so we were like, okay. And, and it's so hard to tell, you know, this person had been um, in a treatment program for a long time and was like, man, she really could be ready for something that is less structured, um, that that is a little bit more um, an opportunity for her to use and rely on her own skills and she wasn't ready for it. So there is this, you know, trying to figure out, are they ready to kind of come on this program where they do need to be a bit more self-reliant um, and, and then do they still need something that's a bit higher care? Um, Master chef, man, I was really wondering about how our kids were going to fare in the kitchen and they freaking loved dinner. That was like their favorite thing was cooking. Um, and they uh, either came, a few of them came with a couple more cooking skills than I thought. Um, but then um, they actually just turned out that they loved it. And so that was just like their biggest evening activity. Um, yeah, those are kind of like a lot of our, our learnings from this summer. So adding parent coaching. That's what we got from that. Mm. Um, so on program, something that we just like took away of like, man, uh, you're just trying to do your first program evaluation, right? And what we loved was the group culture, um, continually learning. Like we um, kind of went over what is storming, norming, performing, all those things. And then we just like asked the team, like, hey, where do you guys think you're at? And they were so quickly able to like self-identify. This is where we're at. This is what we're feeling. And this is what we want to do about it. Um, we found that on our wellness and core curriculum, uh, man, these girls were so vulnerable, uh, shared so much, encouraged each other so much. Um, really felt that they were in this environment where they were in peer to peer relationships. And a lot of them were sharing like, hey, when I'm at home, you know, or I'm at school, uh, none of the other students, um, none of my friends like have this experience. I'm like the one, you know, um, and so being out here, they were like, I can actually share with you guys because you know what it's like. Um, you guys have either similar challenges or um, and so they were really able to open up and feel like they were in a peer to peer environment, which was nice. Um, <laughs> definitely a lot of life skills, which I think is like across the board, kind of what we're hearing and seeing from students and families is that just general life skills um, students are lacking. And that is how to 
how to stock a kitchen, how to budget, how to be responsible for dinner and make a meal all the way through and um, how to make a grocery list that starts with what you already have or how to clean their rooms or some of them doing laundry for the first time. Um, so it was incredible to see students come from not knowing how to do that at all to being like completely self-sufficient. Um, I don't want to read everything at you, but that's like a couple of the takeaways. Um, what did parents say? So we've completed our first program and gotten our very first program survey and parent feedback, which is incredible. Um, and honestly, um, all of the parents came back with like, this was absolutely amazing. We got incredible feedback from parents. Um, certain uh, parent success stories was like, this was exactly what we were looking for. Um, we were definitely looking for something that felt like adventure and cultural immersion and this amazing fun program abroad, but it had just the right amount of um, the support that we were looking for and helping them challenge their stuff. And in all honesty, so much of students working on their mental health challenges on program was you live in community and in tight community. And so you don't have the ability to not work on your stuff um, because you're going to have group impact. Um, and so the girls, you know, first they're learning about how to do conflict resolution and how to give each other feedback and then how to support each other. And so um, no matter what challenge each student came with, um, you know, they, there, there was no hiding it. There was no avoiding it. There was like, hey, it's here. And if it's going to have a group impact, the group's going to call you out about it. And then the group is going to come um, ask you how to support you. And um, and so it was incredible because there it was just this like, I you know, there's just so much power in community um, that really helps you get through um, whatever it is because each student had their own challenges. So that's what we heard from parents here. Uh, we did ask, hey, you know, what did we see your student grow in? And we did a parent call about a week after the students had returned home. Um, and parents were, you know, six weeks is such a short time. So we didn't know what we were expecting that students would walk away with after six weeks. And students were like, oh my gosh, she is advocating for herself. She comes to me and tells me um, what she needs and what she doesn't need. Or I tried to set a boundary and I was sat there waiting for the explosion and it didn't happen. Uh, one of the parents was like, she makes her bed and cleans her room on her own. I didn't even ask her, you know? Um, and uh, they're like, I don't know how long that's gonna keep up, but I like it. <laughs> mm -mm. A lot of parents were happy that um, that they were in just like one location, loved the activities that they were gonna do. A big part of the feedback is students do get a certificate on the summer program. They got a certificate of an internship. They got a certificate of 30 hours of Spanish language immersion, a certificate of uh, 30 hours of volunteer service learning. They've sent them to like their high schools. They, they all were able to get um, credit for some of the volunteer hours that they do or, or put it on their student resume. Parents said that they had confidence in doing things on their own, um, a lot of maturity and self-advocation, um, and definitely seeing a lot more confidence and independence from their kids. All right, so um, I recognize that we're almost to the end of our hour. Um, does anybody have any questions about about the model, the days, the parent experience, the student experience? You know, um, out of all the quotes, you know, that were just there, some of the biggest ones were, honestly, <laughs> these are all texts that I got from parents sometime in the middle of the program was just a lot of it was like, wow, I haven't seen that smile in a long time. Um, these students were having a blast. Uh, they were like, you know, they were showing, they were taking, I would send, I, I totally blew up parents' phones. I was like sending them photos of their kiddos and um, they were like, wow, I haven't seen that smile in so long. Or they'd, show, they'd share it with their, their own family or their sisters and be like, oh my gosh, she's having the time of their life. Um, this program is fun and silly and they create absolutely incredible friends um, that continue long past the program. So that's kind of the summary um, of everything that we have done and that we're gearing up for our 10 week young adult program this fall. Uh, does anybody have any questions or Sharon, do you have anything to add? Can I ask a quick question? Go ahead. Please. So how many girls do you like to have during the summer? What's your number for that? And then also for the fall program? Yeah, for our groups, we'll take a maximum of 12 students and we'll keep a ratio of one to four for staff. 
And the, the fall in Costa Rica and the spring in New Zealand, those are both co-ed. Correct. Thanks. We, we are considering opening one for adolescents a little bit longer with a teacher on staff. So that's just something because it was such a success for the summer and they just blossom. So, you know, we're learning uh, new ways to do this. So why not make it available to those that may be most needy? I had a couple questions. Please. Um, so it sounds like the fall and spring are 10 weeks. And then what is the cost? Yeah, so our six week program for summer um, sits at 17,000. And our 10 week program um, sits at 30,000. And for, so you said they work with their therapist at home. So is that because in Costa Rica, you're allowed to, cause you know, the licensing with like right. therapists, like does that mean that you know, me licensed in California, I could work with someone in Costa Rica, like they're allowing. That. The therapist, Vicky, would do more coaching uh, just because of being respectful for the license, but it kept them connected and it kept them seeing the experience and the growth that their student was involved with. Gotcha. So, so, so the individual kind of, you know, how can I do this or how can I stay connected with my client? Mm -hmm. And we did contact the psychological college in Costa Rica, and we do have a letter from them that was like, yes, as far as we're concerned, you're an American tourist traveling temporarily in Costa Rica and then returning home. You're not trying to move to Costa Rica. You're not a Costa Rican resident. Um, and so we have a letter from them. They were like, you're an American traveling temporarily here, telehealthing with your known clinician from back home. Yes, that makes perfect sense and is fine. Okay. Each student did have um, a therapist that they worked with on program. Um, and of course, each therapist needs to check with like their own state by state and all kinds of things. Um, and so some therapists did uh, do like, hey, we're just um, gonna do this. Uh, like uh, they didn't like submit it to insurance or something. They just did private pay or something for it or just they did coaching for the temporary amount of time to stay in touch. Uh, but each student was able to work with a therapist back home. Any other questions? Amazing. Can I ask one more? Absolutely. <laughs> so for the kids that are on medication and do they bring their entire supply? I know that might be a dumb question, but I'm curious about that. Like how do they get their medication when they're there? Yeah, um, they brought a full six week supply. Um, and then, and I've done like gap year programs like all over. Um, and so uh, students are able to get a 70 day supply, sometimes even a 90 day supply and bring it all with them. Um, students do bring their, their medication for the entire time. And then we do collect their phones and their medication um, and keep them separate. So we do keep their medication um, uh, in a safe, uh, but we do say that students need to be able to manage their own medication. So we kind of just do a call of like, hey, morning meds, um, and we keep them away so nobody gets into anything. Um, and then they come down, but we, we don't administer medication. We do a call for morning meds and a call for evening meds. Um, and students bring them all and we just collect them. Perfect. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Amazing. Any suggestions? I'm open to feedback. Is there anything that you guys, if you were dreaming your most incredible program possible for students that you're seeing right now? What would you wish that they had or what would you want to see more of? Nothing, we're nailing it already. <laughs> we I are, gonna, I think that's a great a question. <laughs> great question. I, I would like some time to think about that and then I could circle back with you. Please Any do. Thought? Oh man. Well, guys, thank you so much for lending your time. It just means so much for you guys to, to jump on and, and hear about this that we're trying to create. Um, we are new and trying to kind of just come up with a different super experiential model that has a bunch of different elements that 
um, can be really impactful for, for students today. So um, please reach out with any other questions. If you think of something later and you're like, ah, I forgot to ask that on the webinar, please reach out at any time. We're always available. Um, and just thank you so much for your time today. Really appreciate it. Nice to meet everyone. Thank you. Nice to meet you. Take care. Thank you. You did good. Good job.